Welcome back to another Yugabyte DB demo. This time we're doing one on high availability and scaling. My name is Marco Reitrich. I'm part of the solutions engineering team here at Yugabyte DB. One thing uh, to note before we head into the live demonstration, within Yugabyte DB, every table that you create is gonna be automatically sharded either by hash or by range or combination of the two, um, basically meaning that, hey, we're taking a table, we're splitting it into different pieces that are defined by the user, and then we're allocating those shards across a cluster of nodes instead of just one, right? Um, so the way this works is every shard is gonna be replicated X amount of times. I mean, for you by DB, we can recommend a minimum configuration of a RF of three, meaning that we're going to have at least three nodes and a replication factor of three. A single shard is going to exist on all three nodes. In this particular visual, we've signified that the leader shard is going to have a little star next to it. So the leader of uh, shard one is on node A, the leader of shard two is on node C. What this means is that this leader that's been elected as a part of this peering group of all the orange and all the teal shards is that it's the main shard that is accepting reads and writes. The rest of the shards are really just kind of standby uh, waiting in, in case something happens, right? Um, they, we can use the in read from these follower shards in specific use cases where you can um, give up some consistency in order to get a little bit better latency, but that is out of the scope for this particular demonstration. Using this type of architecture, what this allows us to do is make every single node into a master node, meaning that every node in the cluster is gonna be actively accepting reads and writes. These different shards are held together using the RAF consensus algorithm. And as I mentioned in the slide prior, the first step when you create a table splits it into different shards and then those shards and it's replicated shards that make up that raft group are going to elect a shard leader that is responsible for all of the reads and the writes for that particular set of data whenever a write comes in they go to that raft leader um you know that leader then writes to all the peers waits for a majority to acknowledge so really key here is if you have three nodes with a replication factor of three as long as you have two nodes up and running you're gonna have a quorum in order to be able to consistently write to the database. For reads, reads are handled also by the leader. Um, and this doesn't need necessarily a quorum of nodes in order to read back the data for you. So, um, you know, that being said, I'll really quickly run through a demonstration of high availability before we get into the scaling piece. What you see here is a individual is our Yugabyte DB platform council. And amongst other things, it kind of shows you the, the different tables that you have, the nodes, um, certain metrics that are exposed, anything from the API layer all the way down to the storage, different queries that might be running, replication, if you have asynchronous setup, and so on. So really just meant to be an operational dashboard to help you, um, you know, administer and operationalize your Yugabyte DB clusters. If we take a look at our nodes, you'll see that we actually have some read and write IOPS coming in. As mentioned, they are equally distributed as best as possible across these nodes. If I wanna go ahead and take at the master process UI, this will give me a little bit of a, a deeper insight into how many tablets I have, how many tablet leaders are on each one or shard leaders. Um, you'll see here 12 and four, 12 and four, 12 and four, we have about equal read and write IOPS. Awesome. So what happens if one of them one of those nodes goes down. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so let me go here and you'll see here on my AWS, I have all three of these running. We can also stop these nodes through this actions button, but that's a little bit more of a gentle stop. I wanna show you guys what it looks like when uh, we, we slam it shut. That would happen if it was unexpected, right? So I'll go ahead and I will stop this instance. This instance is running in availability zone C. So it looks like that was successfully stopped. We'll go back here and we'll just kind of take a look at what's gonna happen on the leader side and on the uh, read and write IOPS side as I 
refresh the data. So as you see here, the leaders have successfully moved over already. Um, slowly with the read and write IOPS, it's going to be equalized between these two. This one's really just offline at this point, right? Because this is the one that is running in US East 1C. And as you see here, they were all running about 140, 150. Now the, this read and write IOPS that was on this third node is now um, distributed as equally as possible on here. As you witnessed, when I first refreshed the page, the tablet leaders equally got distributed across the two remaining nodes within three seconds. Um, so that's really the RTO that we're looking for, for that leader re-election, if something were to go down. At one point, we had four shard leaders on each tablet, or I'm sorry, on each node. When this node went down, the four leaders that were here got equally distributed to these new ones. The tablets themselves did not move. What happened was that designation of being the leader tablet that is accepting reads and writes are what changed. So as soon as we uh, bring this one back up, you'll see that, hey, this is eventually going to you know, start um, bringing it back this way. So let's go ahead and come back to the council. Let's go ahead and start this instance back up. Okay. We'll wait for it to, to show as started. I refreshed it. No, wait, but it wasn't. Here we go. So we should be back. Let's see what happens here. So as this one starts to re-register with the cluster, we're going to see that, hey, all the reads and writes are coming back. All, slowly, the leaders are going to trickle back as well. Just keep refreshing until it gets updated on the console. Let me go ahead and just... Make sure it was running, it's still initializing. Okay, so there we go. It's been alive for about 11 seconds now. You'll see that slowly trickling in on both the IOPS as well as the leaders. Now it looks like all the leaders are moved over. Obviously, the leaders need to be moved. Um, moved over first prior to you being able to see any type of read or write IOPS, right? So now that we have all of them, it makes sense that we're reaching the, the read and write IOPS of the two remaining, uh, the two nodes that were remaining when this one went down.